Hey, Keith here. Today we're going to do a simple standard short leg cast. I know that's simple, but over the years I've seen so many casts where the technician went straight across the foot and either fell behind the great toe metatarsal or buried the little toe. So I'm going to show you a little trick I came up with to get that angle and protect the metatarsal heads without burying your toes. And because this is such a simple cast, I'm also going to incorporate the exogen bone simulator porthole or gas cap as we call it where I work. And it's a little different from what they tell you how it's to be done. I know they tell you put the base layer, then a window and install the gas cap. But sometimes, like with fusions, you've got to put this so close to the incision to guess where it belongs gets really difficult and you make a couple holes. So what we've come up with, I, what I've come up with is a piece of felt and I actually place the bone stem against the skin and wrap the cast around it and it works very well and it's a little easier to wrap the cast too because my theory at uh, Casting 101 too much time between the layers the base layer starts to harden and the color layer doesn't laminate well you have two very thin casts instead of one thick strong cast so wrapping one layer taking the time to mark, cut, window, put the bone stem in, then the second layer sometimes works well, sometimes doesn't. So we've come up with this one and I'm going to share this technique with you as well. Okay, so supplies we're going to need today, stockinette of course. I like to use cotton padding because it conforms, tears, changes directions easy and doesn't laminate to the fiberglass when you separate your cast halves. We've done our, our glass. Now when doing a short leg without a toe plate, I prefer to start with a 3 inch roll so I can get that angle and conform around the ankle easily and then move up to the 4 inch. And with the gas cap, the felt, when our style of exogen, I put this straight to the skin so it's right where you absolutely want it to be. There, we'll be using paper tape to adhere the gas cap mesh to the skin and then soak tape to hold that in place. Our saw of course, our spreaders, gloves. I will use chucks because I like to get the foot off the foot stand early so it doesn't dig in the patient's foot and leave that mark in the bottom of the cast. So I rest it on my thigh without ruining my clothes. Of course your bucket of lukewarm water. The marker is for the trick of getting that angle across the metatarsal heads so it's visible and Dry scissors for your bandage. Sharp scissors are great for trimming around that gas cap and any frayed edges. And then cutting for wet fiberglass. Now, I did show up, to, did show up without my foot stand today, so I'm going to, like I've shown in a previous video, wrap resting the foot on my thigh so the patient doesn't drop into equinus, keeping the patient at 90 at all times while resting the foot on the thigh if you ever don't uh, have a Foot stand with you. This is one technique of keeping the patient at 90 while wrapping the cast. All right, so to get started, we're going to place the bone simulator porthole where we need to be. So, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put it right here. And what I've done is I've trimmed it down to match just inside the felt so none of the plastic digs into the patient's skin. I'm going to do is take a piece of silk tape and I roll it into a little piece and I've stuck them on here so that they don't slide on each other and it stays in place. And so your incision, incisions right there, you can place the cap right next to the incision and get the optimal use out of it. And like I said, we'll use some paper tape to put it in place. And if there's a bandage, just make sure that the bandage is not inside the porthole so that the transducer has pure contact with the skin. We use the red cap so that it can be messed up, touched with fiberglass, the whole bit. And we'll put the good cap on at the end for usage. We'll get our stockinette. Now this cast is going to end 
just behind the metatarsal head, so a couple inches beyond the toes is plenty. And all this excess. I'm going to trim this away because we wouldn't want the folds, the corners, pushing into the skin like a ridge. A slight overlap is fine. But you don't want the corners, the folds, pushing into the patient's skin. So we're going to get rid of that. And with the gas cap, I'll take the center of it, pull it out a little bit. Cut that off and see if I cut enough off to get it to get out of the way. Apparently not, so we'll take a little more. And there we are. I like that. Now, the metatarsal head, so we'll go up beyond it. And being the edge, do a slight pull, because the cotton does determine the tensile strength of the cast, how tight it's going to be. <clears throat> and then, just a little tug, 50% overlap. Now if you want to change directions here at the crease, you can tear it, or remove it, or stretch it to change direction. Keeping that ankle at 90, you always want to capture the position, I'll lean her over the edge. I'll stretch it and tear it again. Tear off any tufts. I'll stretch the bottom part keep working our way up. Then when we get to the gas cap, you can tear under it, and tear right through it, and tear over the top of it, and you get regular layers of cast padding, and your gas cap looks in great shape. And I'll go an extra layer at the top, as well so when you fold the stockinette over the edge, it's got a nice cushion there. Now that trick we spoke of with finding the metatarsal heads, where the toe begins and the metatarsal ends, there you'll feel a little divot right there. And that's where you want your fiberglass in, so we're going to mark it right on the top. I'll find the small toe where the phalange begins, go right on top and put a dot there. And that is the angle we're going to want our fiberglass to be at. Instead of trying to guess it, all you got to do is connect the dots. Now I prefer to double glove now that they no longer put powder in them so that when I'm done with the base layer and ready to move on to the second layer of fiberglass, I don't have to fight getting those gloves on, just pull the top layer off and I keep going fluently since the timing is set for your fiberglass to harden. We get our fiberglass, three, four squeezes underwater, one squeeze out of the water, I'm going to open it up, lift up keeping that foot at 90 and looking straight down on that foot. Going to connect those dots, keeping the fiberglass in contact with the foot. Remember, we want to pull the plaster or the fiberglass. And start working our way up the foot. And since this is a weaker spot, <clears throat> Make sure that there's plenty of strength underneath. There we are. And work our way up. Good. So then I'll grab the four inch fiberglass to go up and down the length of the leg. And when it comes to the gas cap, what we call wet scissors, and I'll angle the cut towards the bottom. So I'll just 
the fiberglass on each side of the gas cap. And we'll do it from the bottom up. Now if it's not perfect, there's a little bit there, don't worry about it. That's why the pointy scissors come in handy to trim fiberglass that gets in the way. We'll come down again. Angle towards the center. And if you're lucky, you can even pull it and avoid cutting and work our way down. that lays flat again so we don't want to air pocket under there. <clears throat> Uncomfortable to the patient or allowing things to shift or keep the transducer from coming in good contact with the skin. Let me take our third one. I like to reinforce the bottom just in case the patient has an accident or you have an uncompliant patient. Reinforce the bottom just in case it does touch the ground. It won't jeopardize the injury or surgery because the cast didn't hold up. I will fan fold. I like to fan fold eight layers. Again, connect those dots under there, just behind them, and capture it. And fan fold the heel, the heel area. Four or five layers there. Okay, reinforce the foot area, foot and ankle area. Then they that, do your molding, the arch, the Achilles, that in contact. sticky set of gloves and fold that cotton over. If you need a little more, go ahead and add another layer of cotton. Right, we'll peel that back. And let's take a look at what we have here. You can get rid of this or just fold it back. And you see metatarsal heads are all clear and all five toes exposed for keeping an eye on their size and color, signs of swelling. Get rid of the excess. And if you did encroach a little high or you know a little close to it, the pointing scissors, you can very carefully trim this back and get that angle behind the toes. I kind of like what we have. So as we can see, all metatarsal heads are covered, protected, so the toes don't come over the toe and stretch the injured area or the tendons up here. And all five toes are exposed for the patient to keep an eye on them for their size, their color, signs of swelling. All right. So, and for the color layer. towards the bottom center, pull that around, and I'm going to do it and then across the top area, stretch it, pull it around,
and you either work your way down with it to reinforce it. If you've got plenty, just cut that free. Laminate and flatten that. And if you can see, we did bring the fiberglass up the side a little bit. I'm not worried about that. We'll take the red cap off and get rid of that in just a moment. Alright, so to trim this out and put the good cap on, we're going to get rid of the red one that's covered with fiberglass. And with a little pointy scissors, we can easily get right down to the base of this and get rid of this excess fiberglass. Okay. Now because the gas cap is against the skin, the felt plugs they give you with the little clothing tags, I tear a few layers off so it goes in a little deeper. And as they'll tell you, make sure the clothing tag sticks outward because that's your handle to push it in and out. As I explained to the patient, when they're not using the stimulator that's got to be in for gentle pressure against the skin to avoid what they call window edema, your circulation wanting to come out of there. Now we take the proper gas cap with a little spring to keep that felt in place and the transducer. Look it on with its leash and and there we have it. Okay, so as we learned, to bring the cotton and the, the stocking it out beyond it, to find this crease here and here. And on the top, look straight down and put those two black dots there. So when you bring your fiberglass underneath, you look straight down, connect those dots, and it'll get you really close to the metatarsal heads where the toes don't hang over or you don't bury a toe. As I said, I forgot the foot stand today, so we balanced on the thigh, keeping the ankle at 90 so it doesn't plantar flex and dorsiflex the foot, creating wrinkles here. The, you saw my method of attaching the bone stimulator porthole or gas cap to the patient's skin so it's exactly where you want it, it doesn't shift, and both layers of fiberglass laminate to each other so you have one thick, strong layer of cast there. And the cutting to try and wedge around it reduces the buildup of fiberglass around it, so a little bit of trimming only and the gas cap fits right in there nice and snug.